Welcome in to the evening devotional time with the Pickerington Church of Christ. We encourage you to find additional resources on our website at pickeringtonchurch.org slash at home resources. So grab your Bibles and let's enjoy some time in the Word. The reading tonight is from John 18, verse 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from this world. Well, hey everyone, we are back for another episode of Manthony tonight, and we are going to wrap up our series of teaching that we've done on the parables. If you are just joining in for the first time tonight, go back and look at all these Wednesday night devotional um, time together. We've done several parables, um, and there was a theme that showed up in each of them, most of them that revolved around this idea of what the kingdom of heaven would be like. Jesus was in his ministry telling story after story to get us an image in our mind of what it would look like to live in the kingdom of God. And so we've taught several different lessons on this mat about this, and we thought it'd be good for us to pause for a minute, draw back as we wrap this uh, series of teaching on the parables up, to ask the question about what is really the kingdom of God. And so Matt, let's have a conversation about the kingdom of God, and um, it's a fun one. Um, it, it, it's, it could be a little bit challenging, but I think if we just you know come up for air every now and then, we'll find that the parts that we understand really help us yeah. in our walk. This will be faith. an overview. Yes, yes, for and sure. there's mo- so much more that you can get out of it. So, okay, man, this is the obvious one. You ready? What actually is a kingdom? A king's dominion. Yeah, it's that simple, isn't it? A, a, where he reigns. A king is... A kingdom is a place where a king reigns, right? And so when we talk about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the gospel, we're talking about the place where God, through Christ, his anointed one, reigns, right? Yeah. So as we do that then, okay, we're talking about the kingdom, Matt. Why do you think it's so important for us as disciples to at least have some grasp on life in Christ being equivalent to being in the kingdom of God. Why why do you think that matters to us? I think there's a couple things in it. Uh, The first one rests upon the king. Um, We have been given exceedingly great and precious promises, right? And those promises are only secure if there is one who has all authority and power to back up his promises, right? Not just a big talker. Right. So not, not a... Not a dead Messiah, you know, that's best, but one who's raised from the dead and ascended on high and is the lone ruler of the universe. Now, I can put my hope in that he has the power to overcome my enemies, to overcome my sin, and um, I can trust in him. The other thing is, my being a subject to him brings his blessing, riches, favor, and... um, if, if I can trust him to meet all my needs and he is a perfect king, which we have none of those on earth, but this one is, if I can trust him, then yeah. I'm going to be completely fulfilled living kingdom life. Yeah. It's, it starts with his authority, right? Yeah. Does he have authority and um, what's the limit on it? And what's amazing about him is not only does he have authority, but there's, it's uncapped, right? Mm-hmm. He said all authority heaven and earth given to me. He rules, okay? Then it seems like you're saying, okay, it's his authority, but then there's an element of his character. Not only does he have this ultimate mighty authority, he's a good guy. He's the best of the best. There's nobody has a better nature than him. So what you're saying is if you look at both those things, acknowledge the reality of his authority and then accept and understand the quality of his character, there's almost an excitedness to yield to him. Yeah. Like, I don't want anybody to rule over me other than him. No, and that's why I think we're nervous about the idea of a kingdom, especially here in America. But if you look across the world, where where, where, where there are monarchical rule, right? (laughs) Where one is ruling and it's a human, it's really going to revolve around that human's worldview and how he thinks of you and how he thinks of himself. And I don't really like that idea. Sometimes they change. How about... about, um, (laughs) Jesus, same yesterday, today, forever. Like sometimes these people change, you know, and and he's just got this beautiful consistency about him. And he's the ultimate political figure that can actually do everything he says he'll do. 
right? No one else has been able to do that. He can, he can back up his word. And, and good. his character, yeah. right, yeah. is perfectly good. Yeah. There is one good, and that is God. Yep. And he has given all authority <laughs> and power to his one and only son, Jesus Christ, it, it, to, to be a king. Yes, and, and you know, what's so great for us is you think about in the first century how much they valued Roman citizenship. You know, people would buy it, and if you had it, it was something to be cherished. And for us, you th- if you think about that description of that king, you get to be a citizen yeah. of his kingdom. Like where you, you, have, you have, where access. have rights and access. Yes, yeah. yes yeah. it's awesome. So this is, I hope that you can see why it's something we're so excited and passionate about because when, when you see Christianity beyond just the individual forgiven or not forgiven realm or the individual go to a building and worship or don't worship realm, but you begin to draw back and go, bigger picture, ultimate reality, ruler of the universe, I get to submit to him. It has massive changes. So before we get into that stuff, that how it really impacts me, Matt, can, let, let's let's step back and go. Um, what was how, how was God preparing us for this kingdom? Uh, how was He preparing His people like to understand that this kingdom was going to exist? It's coming. Um, he promised it. Like the Scripture's full of that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Through through the prophets, right? Mm-hmm. Um, through revealing uh, to His people their purpose. And then to allow them to be the teaching tool for the nations, which didn't always go well, but that in and of itself became a a teaching point too. But like he wanted to teach them about him being the sole ruler of the universe and how he can care for all of their needs. That He is their God, right? So men sin and we've got a problem we need to resolve. So the prophecies revolve around two ideas that there is one coming to save you from your sins, but he is also going to be the ruler of the universe. (laughs) He's going to, he's going to have sovereignty over lives. And so when Peter was preaching that first gospel sermon in Acts chapter two, right? He said, this Jesus whom you have crucified, God has made him both Lord, that would be the kingship and Christ. That would be the the saviorship, right? Mm -hmm. The saviorhood of Jesus. So, uh, he began to talk about it very, very, very early. Uh, you know, you get hints of the need for a savior in Genesis. And Moses then starts to talk about uh, someone uh, as someone to whom God has given authority to give laws, to judge by that law, to deliver people. He said in Deuteronomy 18, uh, there's going to be one rise up from among you like me, like me, yep. a deliverer, a lawgiver, yep. uh, all right, a judge, a, a prophet. Uh, who, he said, you will hear. And it'll be that whoever does not hear him, it'll be required of him. So this person that he hinted at, is you're going to be accountable to this person. He's going to have authority to rule, and it'll be God-given. So it'll be a time when it shifts. And then you move into, uh, where were we, Deuteronomy? Yeah, Yeah, you can skip ahead into David. And David gets all excited and he says, you know, he's been dwelling in tents in a tabernacle. We need to build a really nice house. God needs a house, yeah. And God will let Solomon do that. Um, But he said to David, have I ever asked you to build me a house? Let me tell you about house building. I'm going to build you a house. And I'm going to send one who's going to build your house. Your your family lineage is is, going to be that there's going to be someone come from your body, from your blood, who is going to reign on the throne of David forever. That's right. Wow. Forever. Okay, so, so now we're talking like king, kingly and he's stuff. not being poetic or exaggerating. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's not talking about saving their souls there. No. So he's talking about this, the lordship of, of Jesus yep. coming through David. And then if you uh, skip on down to uh, Daniel, when, they, yeah. when that kingdom, unfortunately, under Solomon, or after Solomon, his son Rehoboam, when it split and it divided... Uh, And then the northern kingdom got carried away into exile. And then the southern kingdom got carried away into exile. The people were in despair. They needed hope. And the prophets are going to. And we get some of our richest, richest messianic prophecies Mm -hmm. in their greatest times of despair. Big promises. Yes. Yes. Daniel's one, right, Right. who is serving the the kingdom of Babylon and the king of Babylon. And he's going to him saying, you're having dreams, aren't you? I can interpret these dreams. And in one of them, he says, this is how you ultimately interpret this dream. Uh, in the days of these kings, the ones I just described having this nature, which would be Rome, yep. 
uh, the, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall <laughs> never be destroyed. Never. never. Right? And it will break in pieces and consume all the nations. Wow, that sounds like a powerful kingdom. Mm -hmm. Right? And um, he, he prophesies of that. Just a few chapters later. Seven, yeah. Chapter seven. He That's touches awesome. on this vision where he sees this one, like the Son of Man, coming to the Ancient of Days and being given a rule and authority and crowned as a king. Yeah. Which comes to be, all nations, of course, yep. yeah, and all nations are going to bow down him. before him. Yes. So it's going to include every tongue, every tribe, all yeah. the, which has been the inclusive nature of really the kingdom Jesus was bringing. So Israel and then to, to, to Judah was a image, a picture of that. You yes. Know? So setting those big, those are some prophecies that kind of give them yeah. a, a whole picture of what this kingdom's going to be like. Then you got a bunch of just fun ones like yeah. Bethlehem Ephrata, which is the Bethlehem the of, small of David, yeah, that, the small right? City. That Jesus was born in. Uh, out of you is going to come forth one to be ruler in Israel. Yeah, that little town, though you're little among all the thousands of towns, out of you is going to come one for it, and he will be of old. Yep. So he's going to be the eternal one who's going to come to the world through Bethlehem. Zacharias <laughs> says, fun, right? you'll recognize him. Yeah, was it chapter 9? Uh, Zechariah 9. Right? He said, you'll recognize him when he comes to you on a donkey. The yeah. colt of a donkey, like specifically. Yeah, there yeah. will be two, and it'll be the foal of a donkey. Yep, that's that who he'll, he'll be, be. He'll be riding on him, and that's when he came into Jerusalem they laid in the, the Hosanna, final week Hosanna. of his life, and they're waving the palm branches, and Hosanna to the son of David, and uh, this is our king. Yep. You know, here, here he comes, our king that Zechariah talked about. And back to your earlier point, too, about um, we're just acknowledging ultimate reality here. Remember, Jesus said the rocks would cry out if we told them to be quiet because this is just what it is. Yeah. And so uh, Jesus, this kingdom shows up, right? And Jesus, that's almost the first sentence out of his mouth publicly. The kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it's really the essence of what he's revealing. But what was so strange about that is they didn't recognize it, right? Now, part of that was, like you described, Israel, Judah going into captivity. Hope was depleted, and the prophets were bringing hope about a kingdom, a kingdom, a kingdom. And they were looking for something that resembled really what David had, right? The glory of David and Solomon's kingdom, mm -hmm. earthly power, earthly blessing. And um, they, they missed it. Even, even the apostles themselves, remember after Jesus oh, yeah. raised from the dead, they wanted a political insurrection, man. Yes. What, is this Rome is the controlling time, right? them. Yep. They, they wanted to kick Rome out. They wanted to have this. And so they say in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, Jesus is getting ready to go back to the Father after he raised from the dead. And they go, oh, hey, Jesus, is now the time when you're going to restore, restore the kingdom, kingdom to Israel? Yeah. Like, like, and he said, just go wait in Jerusalem for the power. I could tell. He, <laughs> he loved them. And he went, guys, just I promise you'll figure it out. Just wait. And, and, and they did. Really, what what... Jesus was zigging and they were zagging. Well, the reason they missed it was the nature of what Jesus' kingdom would be like. You said before, it's unlike any other kingdom that's ever existed. What are some of the things, Matt, that you could share with uh, the, the, those listening that the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is like that is unlike anything that we might be aware of? Well, just because it's fresh on my mind from our conversation here off the cuff, uh, it does not have to be a kingdom that is in political power. It doesn't rely upon. Uh, it doesn't rely upon geographical boundaries right. on the planet here. It doesn't rely upon political power. Um, you know who, who's in who's in charge. It doesn't rely on any of that. It's in effect with a king who said, "My kingdom is not of this world. Mm -hmm. If it were, my servants would fight." Like physically, we'd, we'd be going after after the world to conquer the world through might and force. So, so it doesn't rely on all of the peripherals that we're seeing around us to somehow line up that we recognize, okay, this is the kingdom. He said it's within us. Mm -hmm. Luke 17, right? He said the kingdom of God, you won't say, look, it's here, or, look, it's there. He says it's, it's within you. Yeah. So Meaning, go ahead. Yeah, so like when Daniel said, it will break in pieces and consume the nations, right? Uh, the kingdom within people spreading from person to person, like a pandemic, spreading from person to person will, will go throughout all the world, that news, and wherever it falls upon the hearts, that good soil that we talked about a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, 
whenever it falls upon those hearts and somebody receives it and says, I want to make Jesus my king, the kingdom is yeah. now right there. And, th and to that point, if we pause there, which this is what makes this concept so important for us, especially in the time that we live, Matt, because American Christianity has sort of accepted the Christ of Jesus, but not the Lordship of Jesus sometimes. It's the, we love that he relieves us of guilt, yeah. you know, washes us of our shame, frees us from sin and the consequences of it, but equally uh, important is like you might, you, you could say you don't even experience that really until he actually is your king, your Lord. Yeah. And a, as a people in a culture that sort of worships at the idol of radical individual freedom, like I am, I can do what I want, choose what I want, pull myself up by my bootstraps. I run my life, you know, the captain of my soul kind of thing. Um, Jesus being king punches us right in the mouth yeah. and says, you actually don't run your life. Uh, the one that catches me all the time is, you know what Paul says, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. He talks about being led by Christ in a triumphal procession. And that's imagery of the Roman uh, army. When they would go into a city or an area and they would defeat that place, they would take the ruler of that place, the mayor of the city, the kid, whatever, and they would strip him naked, put hooks in his nose, and walk him through like a parade to, to demonstrate to everybody watching, we own this place. And Paul says, Christ leads me in a triumphal procession. Like that's how much he saw his authority in his life. Like I, now he says he was joyful about that because there's nobody better to do that than Christ. And so um, it, it does make that big difference. And, and so part of the nature of this kingdom is that it, its lifeblood really revolves around having humility. Remember in James and John's mother comes to Jesus and she's like, can, can my son sit on your right and your left hand? And, and they've got a really a false understanding of what power and authority looks like in this kingdom. So Jesus says to them, you've watched people be in authority, Gentiles. You know, they, they lord over you. But in my kingdom, it's not like that. If you want to be great in this kingdom, the, the most successful people, the greatest people are those who learn how to serve. It's the richest a, people. Who are they? A, there's so many paradoxes, right? Yep. If you want to be rich, die to yourself, leave all, take up your cross, right? Um, yeah, if you want to be powerful, serve. If you want to be rich, give. If you want to be yeah. happy, like, you know, like, like happiness is found in, in following the will of God and, and submitting and yielding. And you want to be free, follow, mm -hmm. right? It, it's, it's so counterintuitive to everything that our flesh would tell us. And that's what makes it so hard because we our flesh also tells us to trust ourselves, and like you said from the very beginning remember he is lord and king and his character is good so he is someone that you should trust honestly more than i even trust myself because i'm not always right and good you know so um th this kingdom man it seems it's, it's it's magnetizing to us we want to i want to join it and be part of it so here's thinking about that matt is is the kingdom something I'm a part of right now? Is, is it here? Or is it like, is kingdom synonymous with heaven? Is it synonymous with what I'm doing now? What do you think about like, has it come yet? Has it come yet? When Jesus was born, the wise men came looking for the one born king of the Jews, yeah. right? Jesus preached about the kingdom, prepared people for it. They were supposed to obey it and do it when they heard it, actually. And then when he was asked if he was the king of the Jews, um, and that that illegal trial in the middle of the night that the, the chief priests mm -hmm. and, and the council put him on, they just point blank asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he said, it is as you say. Yep. So he was the king. He was there. The question is, had the kingdom come, right? He told some people in Mark chapter 9, Yeah, yeah, yeah. some of you won't die until you see, see it, it come. With power. power. Yes. Yeah, right? So it's, it's near, the preaching was, of John and Jesus. It's near. Here's what it's like, yep. the parables. It's going to be like. Yep. King is here. So the only thing that has to happen is there has to be an ascension to power, to the yep. throne, right? He has to conquer something. What did he conquer? So, so he, you know, you and I, everyone else in the world, as the people he wants to conquer, are under subjection to sin and death, our greatest enemies. And this king, you know, sometimes I think about kings, you know, sitting in a, on a, you know, a cushy seat and they're... Kings for them in those days were the most powerful warriors ready to go fight, and they were anointed king or, or chosen king because they won the victory. So 
Jesus is who he is, but he was he earned his kingdom by going and fighting. Um, and he went to the cross, into the tomb, and then in power raised. That's where he conquered sin, the devastating effect of sin, and death. Those things, those enemies that have us under their control, completely demolished now because of his conquering. But that doesn't mean the kingdom's organized yet, right? So he's conquered them, and, and the thing that keeps us trapped, he's defeated, so I can celebrate in that victory. But he hasn't, um, at that point, even though he's resurrected, he, it hasn't, been, hasn't all come together yet. And then 40 days later, as he's getting ready to leave the earth, he, the Bible says, ascended. And what do you think that means, he ascended? In what way? Yeah, that's, so that, I think that's a really crucial part to think about Jesus. Um, the ascension is a part of the gospel we don't talk about as much. Um, ascension is not just that he physically levitated higher. You, you know, the, the word ascension really is that he came to power. So you think about if you and I were visiting Buckingham Palace and you weaseled your way around the guard and snuck past the queen and knocked her out of the chair and there's the crown, uh, you know, the, the, the throne sitting there and you walked up the steps and sat down, your body would be physically higher than it was. But you have not ascended to the throne yet, no. right? Because you're not in power. I would descend into jail. That's right, that's right. And, and so Jesus, when he ascended, didn't just levitate physically higher. He was crowned king. God placed him above all. And right. that's when the, the Daniel prophecy was fulfilled, mm -hmm. where Daniel said, I looked and I saw the Ancient of Days, and one was coming to him, and he was given a kingdom and power and mm -hmm. all nations bowed down to him daniel was foreseeing that ascension to to power and coronation and remember jesus uh the some of his last words were all authority has been given to me yep. in heaven and on so, earth. so there's a there's an already but not yet element to this right so remember he said in luke 17 the kingdom of heaven is in you and so it has begun mm -hmm. and as he conquers territory which is not physical land but human hearts as he conquers more and more territory his kingdom is growing and there's going to be a day when it's just his kingdom that exists and let me ask you as you think about that matt what do you look forward to most like like what what is the bible promised about this coming kingdom that's going to be fully reigning and fully here like like what, what sort of excites you the most about mm -hmm. that Jesus prayed in John 17 about he longed for the day now that he had done his work, first five verses, he, where he said that I can be with you in the glory which I had with you before yeah. the world began. So one of the things I always like to think about is when I think, boy, how did he, how did he live here sinlessly? One of the things that he could do is envision going home. Yeah. And it was so glorious that he didn't want to sin one time. No. To risk going back to the Father. And so he prayed on the same night he was betrayed. He prayed in, in relief that I've done the work. I yep. can't wait to go home. I've then Paul, it. right? Paul was working and he's imprisoned. And he's writing about, boy, I long to go and be with, go home and be with the Lord. I'll stay here, but. I'll stay here, but I really long to, to go there. But I if there's wait. benefit for me to be here, I'll be here. So I guess to answer your question is, I. I'm longing for what they're longing for, and that's probably first and foremost to be in the presence of God where I actually can see him as he is and be with the Lord and experience him yeah. relationally together like that. So cool. now we have all things. Uh, what, how does he say in Ephesians 1 thing? Every spiritual, spiritual blessing, blessing in the heavenly places in Christ we have been given. So we have the power of Christ to, yeah. to conquer. We have fellowship. the presence, yeah. right? The, presence, yeah. uh, the fellowship and presence of, of God and Christ to enjoy. We have all of those aspects. We can't see it, and we're not there necessarily where he is. We taste it sometimes. Then we will be. Yeah. So when he comes again uh, and he calls us out, like last week's parable, he divides the sheep from the goats. I want to be a sheep. I'm wearing my sheep shirt today. I like that. I want to be looking like a sheep. And uh, when he calls, um, it's really about hearing his voice, though. And and I'll I'll go to be with him. I want to be ready for that day. And um, see, so, so you long almost to go home. Just to there, go, just to go where there's no more strife. Yes. Sin, 
brokenheartedness, yep. tears, right, sadness, all the things that the Revelation yeah. talks about. And what's really neat about the way you describe that is, is joint, being part of the kingdom is home. Yeah. So it's not just a yielding to a power that is the greatest power and you just give up. No, no, you were stitched, sewn, designed, built to exist in that as your most natural habitat, your home. Yeah, my, my spirit is, will be in its, in its, in its a familiar place, yes. in a spiritual realm. Natural habitat, realm, right? right? Yeah. So, and it's not about, like a lot of people are, you know, we joke sometimes about, you know, the golf courses be really cool in heaven, you know, and the fishing's got to be really good up there. It's like, it's not that it's like a cooler place than here because this is a pretty cool place. Yeah. I can go and find joy and pleasure a lot here on this earth, but we're not yet with God ushered into his presence where we belong. That's and what we're created his reign for. is not fully submitted to in every square inch of where we exist. Yeah. And so that's why I, I long for an environment, first of all, where his reign and his ways rule every square inch. And secondly, I long for the time when I will be a person that doesn't have to fight anymore to follow him. Because I wake up daily, man, it's a fight. I mean, I... I struggle to go, you know, I, I am convinced here that following him is the best thing I can do. Yeah. And I'm not always willing here. My flesh fights me on that all the time. And I cannot wait for the day when he allows me to shed that flesh mm -hmm. and exist in a realm where I go, man, this is how it was always supposed to be. You know, and, and I think that's why Peter tells us. It's a good us, fight. Yes. Because it has. It's a worthy fight. There's a good purpose in it. Yeah. There, there will be an end to, uh, you know. That's right. That I we're, that we're for fighting that. for. We're fighting for the end when we. Yeah. Get to enter in. So we, we want to encourage you and encourage each other. Jesus is king, whether we like it or not. It's ultimate reality. Or every tongue will, it or not. Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow. Um, let him be king of your life and my life now so that we are ready that when he comes to usher in this kingdom fully to dwell on every square inch of where we exist with him, that we will be ready and we'll participate in that and not miss out on that. That's really the essence of what hell is, is to miss out on the presence of God fully and to dwell in the place that he has prepared for us. And so we encourage you to be ready for that. If there's any way we can help you, please let us know. And, you know, Matt, I think it'd be good if you close us with a prayer yeah. about uh, thanking him for his kingship and uh, looking forward to that. That's so, one way we can help. Yeah, let's help pray together. Let's pray. Father, we come together. And approach your throne mm -hmm. because of what Jesus has done for us and how he's conquered our enemies and washed our sins away and prepared us for you. So we pray in his name. We're in awe of what you've done for us here, just mm -hmm. the things we have seen and experienced here in our lives, how you've, how you've captured us uh, from sin and, and turned us around and given us joy in our hearts. We can't hardly imagine what heaven will be like mm -hmm. when we get to lay down all of the weight and the burdens and um, to walk into your presence and never have to worry about sin again. To be at home, the home of the soul as we sing. Father, I want to I pray that each one praying together right now will be able to experience that. Amen. Would you, dear God, continue to be our providential protector? Will you continue to Remind us and prod us, even discipline us so that we know your love and we'll be able to meet you and, and be together with you one day. Mm -hmm. What a privilege it is to be called children of God, for sure. Thank you so much for hearing our prayer and being our God. We long to be with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a great we'll night. See you next week.